And for more on this, now we bring in Tracy Walder, a former FBI special agent and CIA officer. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mitch. Now, as we just heard from Brian Enton, he, the suspect here, Brian Koberger, studied the BTK killer, Dennis Rader. Does that theory hold water that maybe he studied BTK and then tried to or was influenced by what he studied? So yes and no, it partially holds water. I have no doubt in my mind that he probably studied BTK in case studies that he had in class, particularly if Dr. Ramsland was his teacher. What we tend to do as, as teachers of criminal justice is we sort of focus on the cases and the case studies, which we have done research on and we are more, most familiar with. So it wouldn't be surprising to me at all um, that he sort of had in-depth case studies on BTK. Now, in terms of correspondence, you know, BTK is, is currently in a maximum security prison. And last I checked, um, he's in solitary confinement, really only allowed one hour of exercise a day, taking meals in his cell. So he's, he's watched heavily. And I would imagine his correspondence is also watched heavily. He has written letters since he's been in prison. And I would think any correspondence would have gone through Dr. Ramsland since she is the one that has sort of that open line of communication uh, with BTK. So I think, you know, Koberger got into this field because he either wanted to study himself um, or really learn how to create the perfect crime. I think BTK is just one of the people along the way that he studied um, in ultimately committing this crime. Uh, and you are an adjunct professor of criminal justice, so I wonder if he's learning anything in these PhD classes or, or in any of his master's or undergrad studies that might have allowed him or given him special insight into how to get away with this. And also telling police when he was arrested, hey, was anyone else arrested? Uh, is that part of, uh, is, what do you make of that? Is that part of any of, uh, of, of his trying to sow reasonable doubt? I absolutely think it's one of his ways of sowing reasonable doubt. He is a student of this. He is working towards his PhD on this, and he would know really how to circumvent the system. And I do think what he's doing is planting these these seeds of, of reasonable doubt. I actually just pulled up the uh, Carfax um, on his car, and it looks like just a few days after the murders, he switched his license plate from Pennsylvania to Washington. This is someone who really thought about what he was doing and really thought about the ways to circumvent law enforcement, which is why now we're seeing that law enforcement was so incredibly tight lipped because they really didn't want anything out there because this guy is 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 a student of this. Well, and uh, along those lines of that car that you just mentioned, uh, you, they were very tight lipped. Everything was kept very close to the vest. And I wonder the fact that they did let that detail out about this white Hyundai Elantra. Do you think that was a bigger deal in hindsight than we maybe realized it was at the time? Absolutely, I think it was a bigger deal. I think that December 7th press release, which you're referring to when they when they discussed that car, that was the most specific thing that law enforcement had really done um, on this case. That was the most specific piece of information that they had put out there. And I do think that there was definitely a reason for that. And I do think that this was a huge turning point um, in the case. I think at that time, I believe the car didn't have um, plates on it or the plates were covered up. And I do think at that time, they were probably having difficulty tracing it, but I think once they put that out there and once they received sort of that deluge of tips, that really was the dream. I guess the car, in essence, really came to be his undoing. That is Tracy Walder, a former CIA officer and FBI special agent. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.